Hey guys, Emilio here. Just wanted to do this video to talk to you about a TFCC or triangular fibristic cartilage complex. Um, specifically, if you're thinking about having surgery, um, so you've had this injury for a while now, you know that it's a pain in the ass. You can't put any pressure on your wrists with an open palm. Uh, you have to be careful with uh, twisting actions, so turning on the tap, turning off the tap, whether that's in the sink or the shower. Um, you know, lifting things, it's, it's, it's a really debilitating, life-changing injury. It's been compared to the meniscus of the wrist, so like the meniscus in your, in your knee. The impact on your day-to-day -day is, is just as painful, but in, in this part of your wrist, which is a problem. Um, basic things like getting up off the couch, getting out of the bathtub, getting up out of bed, things you don't make a conscious effort of uh, prior to, th to this injury, you know, like just leaning on your hands for any reason, crawling into something in a, into a small space. You just can't do it anymore. Um, so it is a pretty annoying, painful, debilitating type of injury. I did mine last year in January uh, at work um, and I tore the TFCC in both my wrists, so left and right. Uh, I started rehabilitation within a month. Did that for seven months at the Hand and Upper Limb Center. Uh, they gave me a lot of wrist strengthening exercises and they gave me these widgets which are like a like a two prong type of widget that pulled the bones in together basically and took the pressure off the TFCC um, to give you less symptoms and probably more time for it to heal. Cartilage, if you believe some people tell you that it can't heal, some people tell you that just like everything else in your body it does heal just gradually over time because there's no blood supply and also it's harder to sustain that healing process because we're constantly using it. Uh, after my seven months of non-surgical rehabilitation, I opted to have surgery. I did this for two reasons. One, because uh, I was told that the surgeon I had, which was Alex O'Byrne, uh, he's supposed to be one of the good, better surgeons in the state. Um, and for two, he convinced me that my, my symptoms uh, based on my injury were very minor compared to a lot of the patients he sees who have really bad issues. But anyway, so those two reasons, along with the fact that he told me that it's a same day surgery, so go in under the knife, back home, um, and I can be back to administration type duties or office type duties within 24 to 48 hours. These are his words. So I went for the surgery. Within three days of the surgery, I ended up back in hospital. Uh, the reason being because um, whenever I try to relax my wrist in the splint, I started to get a shooting pain from my wrist up to my finger. And it was like a burning sensation. It was a painful burning sensation. Now keep in mind, I'm on like four or five different types of painkillers at the time. So to have that sort of extreme pain through that, um, you can appreciate how severe it would, might have been. Um, Within three days after that, uh, I had to have a, uh, a secondary surgery so that he could open me up and find out why I was getting those problems and those symptoms. Uh, it turned out that I had bruising on my nerve uh, from the first surgery, so he'd done something and he'd injured it. Um, and that coupled with the scar tissue forming around the site where he'd opened me up, started to choke the nerve and just caused the aggravation. So basically had no room to breathe, so any sort of movement was causing an aggravation. After that, I went into recovery mode. So they put me in a splint. So the splint comes over your wrist from the forearm aspect through the thumb, and it comes all the way down up to your elbow. So past your elbow, comes up to about here. The other issue is when you do, if you do end up going to that stage, be mindful that they're gonna make your splint protrude past your elbow. Now, if it does that, whenever you try to rest your arm, whether you're sitting down to watch TV, whether you're resting it on a table while you eat, um, anywhere, any sort of resting action, this, if the splint at the elbow is the first part to touch any surface, it will force the splint into your injured area, right? So it causes you more aggravation, more pain. Because of this, for the first seven days, because it took seven days before I could see the girls at the hand and upper limb center to adjust the splint for me, I couldn't sleep. Whenever I try to rest or relax my elbow, it's constantly like this. Um, I would have to try and keep it in a sling or somewhere elevated 
or in some way with cushions or pillows in between it, any and every way possible I could think of to try and recover it. But of course, when you're asleep, you move. You roll around on your side, any sort of subtle movements that get that pressure onto that splint and then back into your wrist wakes you up in tremendous pain. Um, and so for the first seven days, it was pretty tough. Like I went some nights, even with the painkillers that make you sleepy, um, without getting any sleep or so much like 20 or 30 minutes sleep before I somehow moved and woke up in pain. But that was tough. So be mindful of those things. Um, it took maybe five or six times going back to the hand and up the limb center before we finally got to the splint to the stage where it was like, okay, yeah, like this is comfortable. Um, so yeah, just be mindful of that. But the moral of the story is after the surgery, I did uh, six weeks in the splint up to the elbow. After that, they shortened the splint down to the forearm and I kept it on for another three weeks after that. So that was mostly like when I slept. Throughout the day, they didn't want me to wear it anymore. But when I slept, just to prevent it from being aggravated by some odd movement or leaning on it, uh, they wanted me to wear it. Um, the whole process from surgery to recovery is supposed to be six months. At the six month window, they asked me, how are you feeling? And I said, well, I still feel exactly the same. It's just as bad, if not worse. So the symptoms were still there, only they're aggravated now because even, I don't know if you can see it from there, but I basically in my uh, operated site there, uh, he's exposed the nerve because he took the scar tissue away. There's nothing protecting the nerve. So I can just feel it literally by just subtle touches, resting it on a table. Um, and I didn't have that before the surgery. So in a sense, it's, it's much worse now than it was before surgery. Still have the symptoms, still have the problems. Um, it took three more months of rehab before I finally said, enough's enough. I don't think this is fixed. Um, I saw two other surgeons um, who recommended that I go and have an MRI done just so that they can see an updated version or version of what was actually going on in my wrist. And they identified that I still have a TFCC tear and I still have a large ganglion in there. So basically I did my surgery for nothing and it made my symptoms worse. Uh, so the moral of my story for you guys is if you are considering doing this surgery, make sure without a doubt in your mind that the surgeon that you're allocated or the one that you've gone and made your appointment with is the one. Uh, reputations are great, but if you don't actually get along with that surgeon, like I didn't with mine, if I'm being honest, uh, most of my appointments, he kept me waiting 45 minutes to an hour and a half um, past my appointed time. No sorries, no thank you for coming, no none of that. And I was in there for maybe five or 10 minutes, if I'm lucky. Um, you had to get blood out of the stone as far as information gathering was concerned uh, with him. Uh, he didn't volunteer any information, but he was quite happy for you to come and ask him whatever you wanted if you knew what to ask at the particular time. I remember one time I came in to check some results from an MRI and he told me everything was fine. And then when I go and get the results of the MRI, it's listed like a category of things that they've identified as problems. And now I've got to have to go and make a new appointment with him so that he can go and re-explain that to me because he won't take the calls over the phone. So things like that, make sure you're able to communicate with your surgeon, make sure that you get along well with them and you feel comfortable with them because I made the mistake of not having that because I thought that the reputation outweighed those other benefits. It didn't. Um, and also keep in mind that however minor or major your injury is, surgery may not fix it. It hasn't for me. Um, like I said, I'm worse off for having it done. Um, at the moment, now I'm starting human growth hormone injections because they repair tissue and cartilage. Um, so I'm on a three month course of that. So if you're interested in those results, just stay tuned and uh, I'll upload some progress reports as I make way with that. So any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Good luck guys.